working with your Kali martial arts sticks. This is the greatest place to start Kali martial arts sticks. I always say invest your time before you invest your money. That means if you're looking for a Kali martial arts near me, you've looked for Kali martial arts and you live here in West Palm Beach. We teach Kali martial arts. This is a good school, but there are other schools that teach Kali martial arts all around the world. Maybe you're in Los Angeles, you're looking for Kali martial arts near me in Los Angeles, or you're looking for Kali martial arts near me in London, England. Doesn't matter wherever you are, Kali martial arts, you're in Miami, Florida. You wanna find Kali martial arts near me. The best thing to do is start training Kali martial arts with me for free right now. You just need a pair of sticks and they can be official Kali martial arts sticks with the little uh, burn marks. Without the burn marks, you can get a broomstick and cut it in half. Don't wait to start. Grab a pair of sticks, and they're gonna be about as long as the tip of your finger into your shoulder. It can be a little longer, it can be a little shorter. The point is, don't wait to start. You just need, yeah, if you're looking for Kali Martial Arts in Lake Tahoe, Kali Martial Arts near me and you live in Lake Tahoe, start here with me. Start training martial arts right now. Kali Martial Arts train for free online, and then invest a little time get a little bit of knowledge, then go find a really good school to spend your money at. There's nothing wrong with doing that from the start, but if you really wanna learn Kali martial arts, we're gonna do it right now. Start with a stick in each hand and you need a little bit of the stick to come out of the bottom of your hand. You want this stick here. This is gonna be used later to pull or grapple, snap something out of the hand or to strike with. You can even punch with it, strike this way, but you need to have a little bit there. The general rule is about one hand width from the bottom. So Kali Martial Arts, you have some here. You have the longest part there, and you're gonna start with this downward motion for a warm up, and then you're gonna bring it back up. It's gonna go down and up, and I'm gonna adjust the camera a little bit so you can see more of what I'm doing, because this is your first, might be your first Kali Martial Arts class, but whether you're learning Kali Martial Arts and you live in Los Angeles, Kali Martial Arts, you're in San Francisco, maybe you're in New York City and you wanna find Kali Martial Arts near me, doesn't matter, you just found it. I'm the closest to you right now. So train with me, invest your time, and then if you love it, go find a Kali Martial Arts school, and you can even send me an email. If you're not here in Palm Beach County, but you're looking for Kali Martial Arts near you, send me an email, say, hey, these are the schools, what do you think? I have some experience, and finding the best attributes of a school. It's always gonna come down to school cleanliness and if the instructor is halfway, has good common sense. <laughs> Are they a good human being? That's the one you wanna train with. Do they have good knowledge? That's great, that's important too. But you're gonna do this warm up. This is gonna get blood into the shoulder joints, into the wrist, into the hands. When you start training Kali martial arts, you need to be strong in all of your joints Stomach up and in, abs tight, your feet are just under your body to start with. And then we're gonna make it a split motion. And you're gonna do this to increase the stretch. Later, when you start to fight, when you do your striking, you move in and you move out, and you learn your Sinawali patterns, and you block the sword, and you stretch on top, you're going to have to have strong joints, healthy joints. And we get that way from the start by stretching. Stretching and moving blood. You're moving the blood into the joint, the plasma in the blood, the oxygen in the blood, makes it strong, keeps it healthy, safe from injuries during the warm up and the workout. Now, you've done two exercises so far in Kali Martial Arts. The third is gonna be a spin with your wrist. This is my right hand, doesn't matter which hand you start with, drop it, right? Push to the floor, drop the tip, palm to the ceiling, Bring it behind the back side of your shoulder, back of your ear, back of your head, forward. So it's coming back and forward. So what it looks like from the other angle, you're just turning it. Good morning to everybody who's here working out with me already. I appreciate you being here. We're doing Kali Martial Arts. You might be looking for Kali Martial Arts near me and you live in Milwaukee, right? There are Kali Martial Arts schools in Milwaukee. The best one, though, is the free one that lets you see, do you really want to learn Kali Martial Arts? What do you like about it? And then invest your time with me. Train here for free online. Like I said, get a broomstick. Cut it in half. Cut the broom off. You've got Kali Martial Arts sticks. 
at, a, at the beginning. Later, you're gonna get some rattan sticks like this. There's a link below if you wanna see what to pay for them. It says, get your Kali martial arts sticks here in this store. Go look at that if you're interested, but don't wait to start. Start with what you have. You're going around and around. Now, do not do this. This is not right. Opening your hand makes it easier. That's one of my personal rules. If it's easier, it might not be right. When it's closed, you're now stretching the tendons, not stretching the tendons, but you're, you're exercising the tendons, you're stretching the muscle, you're allowing your wrist to become more flexible because it's closed. You need that flexibility. You do that in both hands. You can do it at the same time. Do this for 30 seconds, then reverse all of it. You're gonna pull it back towards you. Comes back, your palm goes to the ceiling again, and then you're gonna swing it past your elbow and your belly, and it comes up to the front. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. This is what it looks like from this angle. When you're learning Kali martial arts, you're doing your first Kali martial arts class. Make sure if you're looking for a Kali martial arts school near me and you actually go into a school, make sure they have good warm ups. Any good school will have good warm ups. Staying safe from injuries, your first priority, should be the main priority of the school safety and cleanliness. Then, they, you know, if they're a decent human being and they're a good teacher, they know how to break things down for you and they have experience with Kali martial arts, then you're going to learn a lot. The weight of these, these are the rattan. So this is in the link below. You can see, it doesn't tell you the weight because they vary so much. Rattan is a weed, not a weed, a grass. It's a grass, it dries out, they cut it. You can see the fibers of the grass. If I get close enough, if there's enough light. I keep losing lights in here. I haven't been able to go to the store and buy a box of lights yet. I have to pay the rent first, pay the back rent for next, and then <laughs> go get some lights. You guys are helping me get it caught up though, this online school. And if you're here in person, if you're here in Palm Beach County or you're in one of the Palm Beaches and you wanna learn Kali martial arts near me and I happen to be closest to you, I would love to teach you. Right there, you can see. So this is a light, lightweight stick. It's not super light though. I wouldn't be able to tell you exactly how many ounces it is. I can't measure it, but I would say it's probably less than half a pound, but maybe you know eight to 10 ounces, something like that. So you go forward and you go back. You go forward and you go back. And all of this is just to warm up the wrist, get everything flexible. I wish I, you said, I wish you, you were here in Arizona. I also wish I was in Arizona by you so we could train Kali martial arts in Arizona. What city are you in in Arizona? Kali martial arts in Phoenix, Tucson, Kali martial arts in Tucson, Kali martial arts in Flagstaff up in the mountains. Is it still snowing up there? Push it forward, push it back. Kali Martial Arts in Germany. I'll tell you, Master Sunny Graf, S-U-N-N-Y-G-R-A-F, she teaches Kali Martial Arts. She calls it Eskrima, or Arnis, A-R-N-I-S, and she's one of the best players of Kali Martial Arts that I've ever met. And uh, she's also a master of many styles. Sunny Graf, she's got schools all over Germany. Look her up, her students are some of the best. Yeah, oh good, Mesa, FMA place, that's great. Filipino martial arts, if you need to find Filipino martial arts wherever you are, type in FMA, but it's going to be called Kali martial arts, Eskrima martial arts, Arnis martial arts, sometimes Doce Perez, D-O-C-E-P-A-R-E-S. Sometimes it's going to be called Sakal. Some people will call it the Academy of Majapahit martial arts or the Majapahit diaspora. And then everybody's like, what? What is that? But they mean Filipino martial arts. Sticks are just one part of it. Kali martial arts sticks are a big part of it. So you're going forward, you're going back. Now, let's get into strikes right away. We're gonna put one on the shoulder and put one down. You can put it on the floor. And if you only have one, train with one. Don't wait till you have two. The point is start now, invest your time, then invest your money, invest your time, invest your energy, learn the basics. Then it's like if, if, if you wanted to join a gym, do some push-ups, some sit-ups for a week in a row. If you do 10, 10 push-ups, 10 sit-ups, 10 squat jumps, or whatever, go for a walk. If you can create the habit, then invest your money in the gym. Most people join a gym, they never go. That's because before the gym, they invested all their time in sitting, eating Cheetos, binge watching TV shows, and they never, they don't have the habit of going to the gym. So give yourself the habit of Kali martial arts, and then invest in Kali martial arts tuition, 
Right now, you can do it for free with me. You can join. I appreciate you guys who join and give me a little money every month. That helps. But go for it. Yes, you're right. You said it, uh, the culture gets adulterated by the input. That's the world we live in now. We have a, a multicultural world from here. Even the world, the countries like North Korea. That's probably the only place where in North Korea they've taken away all the freedoms and all of the light. The sun doesn't even get into North Korea half the time. So over there in North Korea, everything is the way it was 50 years ago. Everywhere else, though, has the Internet, and the world is changing very fast. This is angle one. You're just going to practice angle one over and over, slow as smooth, smooth as fast. Once you get it, if you have a stack of tires or a bag, use a banana bag, use a floor bag, doesn't matter. Use a stack of uh, tires. It's very traditional when it comes to Kali martial arts. A lot of people use, FMA guys and girls will use a stack of tires, especially if you're in, like, the Philippines or Indonesia, which is where... Kali martial arts comes from Philippines, Indonesia, that whole, the diaspora of the Majapahit kingdom. So a long time ago, it covered all these different islands. Some of them were Philippines. Some of them are in what's now Malaysia. That's my understanding. I could be wrong. I'm not a historian. All I know is that I like Kali martial arts. And if you want to learn Kali martial arts, this is the best way to start. Go to the second shoulder. And this is the second angle. Now, as you do this, if you touch your shoulder every time, which is what I'm telling you to do, you're going to keep them tight and in front of your body and follow through with your strikes. And think of temple to cheek or think of uh, the ribs to the other ribs or clavicle coming out the ribs. But keep it nice and tight. I'm going to come down through here. Yes, you asked me if I can do a video on Kubatan. I will do a video on Kubatan. Kubatan is the palm stick, the yawara. Koreans call it dangbong, the short stick. Coming through, striking, 30 seconds per strike. So we have angle one and angle two. Add angle one together with angle two. Get your other hand up. Do this for 30 seconds. This is your first class in Kali martial arts. Put it in the other hand. Try angle one, 30 seconds. Get it warmed up. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. And eventually, you're going to want to be able to defend yourself with Kali martial arts. So you're going to have to increase your speed, power, striking. But you need accuracy. You can have all the speed and power in the world, but if there's no accuracy, you can't hit what you're aiming at, it doesn't matter. Make sure it's coming from your shoulder. Put it on the other shoulder, angle two. Now, my left hand is doing the practice strikes right here. So my left foot must be forward. When you have your left hand in front, put your left foot forward. Striking 30 seconds here, go angle one, angle two. On the left hand, angle one, angle two, angle one, angle two. It is my pleasure to make the videos that you guys are asking for. As long as you send me an email, put them in here. Um, good. Thank you for that comment about the nunchucks. But I'll make whatever videos you want to make. It's just like we were here in person. This is the virtual dojo. Some of you have joined here. Some of you have joined on Patreon. You hit the join button below. Some of you just joined um, on Pascanoli.com. You're not paying any money, but you're training with me. That's good enough for me. Now, when you're here, if you've joined and you have a question, send it to me or your request. It's just like if you were here in the dojo or the dojang or the training hall or the studio, whatever you want to call it, this virtual martial arts school that we have that you and I are a part of. And you ask me in person, hey, how do you use this? Hey, how do you do that? And I have time, I'm going to show you. Because it's my passion. It's what I love. And I appreciate your questions because it makes me think. It makes me grow. One, two. Angle one, angle two. Then one, two, switch your feet. Angle one, angle two, switch your feet. When you're coming forward with that strike, one, two. As long as you're following through, I want to see the follow through. Let's go back to the spinning. And I want you to go down and up like we started, but make a spin up and a spin down. So you're spinning up, spin down. Put myself between these two bags. Let me give myself some room here. Hold on. I don't know if you hear that car out there honking. Yeah, I just had to make sure it wasn't mine. Somebody wasn't breaking in and I had to run out with my Kali martial arts sticks to defend my stuff. 
I wouldn't want to hit somebody over some stuff, by the way. If they need it more than I do, they're welcome to it. It's not worth hurting somebody over stuff. It's just useless junk. But you get close to my family, you threaten me or my family or my freedom, my liberty, then we got to fight, right? I know that's how you feel too. So what I'm doing here is I'm going down and up like before, and then I did these spins like before. So I just add one of those. I call this an orbital spin. Add a spin as you go down, and then the reverse spin. We did that in the warm-up as you come up. So you just add one and one. and do this for 30 seconds. And when you do this, when I'm doing this now, I can feel my left wrist is super tight for some reason. A lot of bow staff this week. Maybe I overdid it. Too many push-ups, too many pull-ups. Somehow, but now I feel stretching out. This is a great stretch out. I go down and I come up. Take it down, take it up. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Take your time. And then put one down and the other one down and alternate. You're starting to fire the brain. We have big tests here locally for the little kids. Assessment tests coming up next week in the private schools. So I'm making all these videos on my other channel on how to do cross body stuff. Cross the body, you wanna increase your brain flexibility, fire all the neurons in the brain. All these cool things that I've been doing for years to improve performance on achievement tests. Anecdotally, I've seen it. That means through the stories. But science shows it too, one hand and the other hand. If you can do it at the same time, now you're moving up to a new level as you train Kali martial arts at home. You can also, you can train Kali martial arts online. There's no question that says you can't invest your time and then invest your money. Now, let's talk about the strikes again. We did angle one, angle two, angle three is going to turn the palm out. The palm turns out and comes up. And the reason for this is super simple. When it comes up this way and it runs into resistance, which is the body or the other person's stick or weapon, it's gonna hit the, the web there and it's gonna stay in the hand. If you bring it up like this, it's gonna hit that resistance and it's gonna peel out of your hand and now all of a sudden you're fighting somebody with a stick, machete, knife, and you've got nothing because you just ripped the stick out of your hand. So you're gonna turn your palm up. This is angle three. Angle three comes up here. Angle four, it's gonna come from here. It's gonna drop down to that other hip. This is my right hand on the left hip. I'm gonna bring it up. And again, I wanna have good targeting. I wanna have good, tight strikes. Bring it up, drop it down, bring it up, up, angle three, angle four, three, four, three. I always like to do angle one and angle two separately, and then I start to build them, put them together, because I feel like you get better, you get faster, and you keep going, you keep going, you keep going. So you're coming up, two, three, four, three, Four, put them together, one, two, three, four. Then put it in the other hand, practice three, four, three, four. And again, you wanna bring it from the hip and up, palm facing up, keep it super tight, super tight. When you're learning Kali martial arts at home, take your time, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Put them together, angle one, angle two, angle three, angle four. Get the other Kali martial arts stick in the other hand, Put it behind your back like this. Now you look like Raya in The Last Dragon from that movie. A new Disney movie just came out. Some of you have seen it, Raya in The Last Dragon. This young woman has to save The Last Dragon or final or something like that. Haven't seen it yet, but I have seen that she's fighting with Kali martial arts sticks. Super cool. I love Kali martial arts sticks. Start on your shoulder. One, two, three, four. Put it back on your shoulder. One, two, three, four. Put it back on your shoulder. One, two, three, four. Let's add that step. One. Two, three, four, add the step. Two, three, four, one, two. Make full range of motion strikes. I'm running into some bags behind me, so I have to adjust a little bit. Give yourself plenty of room, or maybe you're doing Kali martial arts at home. You're doing Kali martial arts online, and you have a tight space. Don't let that stop you from learning Kali martial arts. One, two, three, four, one. Just modify. Three, four, first four strikes. Back to the spins, but this time I'm gonna come from the shoulder and I'm gonna come out. 
This is like that first strike, but I stop. Two ways to do the strike. Stop and pull it back. Notice that before I pull it back, there's a full commitment. And then I pull it back. And then strike and follow through. Strike and pull it back. Strike and follow through. Thank you, Lincoln. Lincoln said he has to go. Thanks for being here. Come back and watch me a little bit later when you have time. Strike and follow through or strike and pull back. Now, we're going to do that strike and pull back. So it looks like this. See the angle? It's kind of like the V on the neck of my uniform from here. By the way, when you train Kali martial arts, they're not going to be wearing this uniform. This is the uniform because I teach multiple styles. And I teach right now, I teach all day long. All day, every day, it feels like. And so when I teach multiple styles, it doesn't matter. I've done this long enough, I can wear what I want. Sometimes I wear a t-shirt and martial arts pants. And the whole deal about the martial arts uniform is that it's comfortable and that it's practical and that it doesn't tear easily. If you have something that fits that bill, maybe it's an Under Armour shirt, a Nike shirt, comfortable, durable, and uh, allows you to move pretty well, that's a good martial arts uniform for you. Thank you, Lincoln. I really appreciate that $1 donation. That helps a lot. Out and back. That's how we grow this Kali martial arts training. And then you do the Kali martial arts training at home. Invest your time. Then you can invest your money. Find the Kali martial arts school near me. Maybe you're in Chicago and you want to learn Kali martial arts in Chicago. Maybe you're in Napierville. Napier, Napierville. Is that it? Napierville? Or you're up in Shaker Heights near Cleveland. And you want to learn Kali martial arts in Shaker Heights. Now what I'm doing here, this is that strike. I'm adding the spin out and in. You, you already did this. You went down and up, but now I want you to bring it out. This is a progression. This is a little bit harder. This is how you get better at Kali martial arts. Bring it out, bring it back, out, back. Then do just one hand. Goes to the ground. Then do the other hand. You told me that it's better when you see the different angles. That it makes more sense sometimes. So I've tried to be mindful of that. Show you what it looks like if you were here in the classroom with me. You don't have to be. You can still learn Kali martial arts at home. Maybe you're in the park. Maybe you're in Manhattan and you want to learn Kali martial arts in Manhattan. You go down to, what's that famous park in Manhattan or in New York? Not Madison Square Gardens, not the Rockefeller, Rocket Center Plaza. Do one hand, the big park, or what used to be the Chrysler Building. You're learning Mar Kali martial arts in New York City, but you're doing it online with me for free in the park. Yeah, maybe you're in Los Angeles. Thank you for that. Maybe you're in Los Angeles and you want to learn Kali martial arts and you're in Hollywood or you're um, out near the airport in Los Angeles, Los Angeles airport, or maybe you are in the hills surrounding Los Angeles. Maybe you are up in Laguna Beach, or maybe you're down in Long Beach, or maybe you're out in the Hollywood Hills, and you want to learn Kali martial arts, but you go to the park in Los Angeles, and you practice for free first with me before you invest your hard-earned money. Ta yes, thank you, Central Park in New York. I always forget the name of famous things. I don't know why. I've been to Central Park. It's beautiful, massive, right? Maybe you're in Central Park in New York City learning Kali martial arts with me right now. And then you, you think, oh, I got to keep it going. I want to learn more Kali martial arts. I've got a lot of these videos, by the way. Try to do it at the same time now.
That fires all kinds of different neural pathways in your brain, making you a lot smarter. I promise you, I guarantee it. Now we have more strikes. We're almost done. And then I want to finish with Sinawali. Sinawali is weaving the weaving patterns that you see when the fighting, when the, the speed of fighting increases, right? Um, good. Texas and Lubbock. Maybe you're looking for Kali martial arts in Lubbock, Texas. And you came across this video, Kali martial arts in Lubbock, Texas. You said, where's the Kali martial arts near me? It's right here. <laughs> We're doing it right now. Train with me. Buy, get yourself a broomstick. Cut the broom off. Cut it in half if you want to. Take a lighter. Don't play with fire. Um, but put the burn marks in it yourself. Now you look like Ryan the Last Dragon or you look like any number of Kali martial arts fighters. And learn it here. And then go find a school to give your money to. But make sure you're going to do it first. I always say that. Invest your time, then invest your money. All right, now we have angle one, angle two, angle three, angle four, five and six are gonna be horizontal strikes. I'm gonna show you seven and I'm gonna do eight is gonna be just a simple lunging, thrusting motion right through their face for self-defense. So we're gonna do all those now together. We're gonna to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now there are others that come in through here we're going to do those in a later video. That's a little bit more advanced. Not that much more advanced, but I'm just, I want to get you going today. I want you to get your training, Kali Martial Arts, online. Invest your time. Then you can invest your money. Three. Good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I find that Kali Martial Arts is good for any age. Kali Martial Arts is great for kids because it improves their focus. Kali martial arts is great for seniors. Senior self-defense has to, senior self-defense self should be uh, practical. Senior self-defense should be um, simple. Senior self-defense should be powerful. Senior self-defense should be something that you can do no matter how old you are. And when you use a stick for self-defense, you have all those things. You have speed that increases because you have that distance between your hand and the end. So if you're a senior doing self-defense, it still works. Um, yeah, realistic knife self-defense. <laughs> Is there such a thing? I, th I think one of the best advice things that I ever heard about realistic knife self-defense comes from Tim Larkin, who is the author of um, When Violence is the Answer. He said, don't, don't worry about the knife. Just go to try, to, try to interrupt their uh, train of thought, knock them out, turn off their operating system. Second to that is if you need to pin the knife against the body and then um, in Kali martial arts, Saka Salat, you're going to see, and, and I'll do, if you look here, I have uh, on this video channel, I have some knife, all the basic angles, all the fighting techniques, and you can learn that. But if you, if you get into a knife fight with somebody and you're trying to take that knife and strip it away, you're going to have a hard, hard time. A lot of people don't do that. I mean, the, 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 the risk of getting stabbed to death and sliced up goes up dramatically. So instead of doing that, learn how to um, carry a stick and then increase the distance between you and the knife. And then keep, keep those strikes simple and basic and powerful. That's why we practice all these strikes so much. And we'll talk more about realistic knife defense in that video. But back to Kali Martial Arts. I want to finish those angles. One, two three, four, five, six, seven, thrust, put it in the other hand. Good thing I have two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, thrust, other hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you want to, you can start doing like, uh, this comes from, that's the same as this. What weapon I think of? Nunchucks. You can, you can, do the same thing with these that you do with nunchucks if you want a fancy way to change from hand to hand or you just do it in the other hand. Get your angles practiced. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, thrust, other hand, one, two. When that other hand comes forward, that foot comes forward. Three, four, five, six, seven, thrust, other hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, thrust, other hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, thrust. Then let's talk about Sinawali, the weaving pattern, the one that everybody loves to learn because it's so cool. It's so fun. Now let me say real quick, 
This is a good warm up move, right? We're gonna do this too. Really good warm up moves, improves uh, flexibility in the wrist. This, excellent warm up move. So is this. And it's not just warming up, it's increasing flexibility, it's building speed, strength, power in your grip. It's gonna help improve the speed and the strength of your strikes. And then you can add it to, you can add that spin to increase the uh, amount of travel of the weapon so that it increases the power and the speed of the strike. Those are all gonna be valid. However, and, and Sinawale is great because Sinawale allows you to disguise repetition doing lots and lots of strikes, and it's very fun, and especially if you have a partner and you start hitting sticks together, or you do it on a bag, or a stack of tires, and you learn different styles. All those are awesome, but that's not self-defense. Self-defense is this, thrusting, striking, eyes, temple, forehead, and self-defense is different. Kali martial arts is used in, the techniques can be used for self-defense if you understand the principles of self-defense. However, Sinawali by itself is not a self-defense application. It's more timing, distance, so it supports it. It's like a jumper or a boxer jumping rope. Plus, it's like a boxer jumping rope adding in the speed bag. So think of it like that because when the sticks start to your flinching is gonna go away after a while. The first time you do it, you're gonna flinch when you hear that sound and you see that stick coming at your face. After a while, you're gonna get used to it. Same reason the boxer hits the speed bag. The bag goes back and forth, right in your face. First few times you do it, you flinch after a while, then you get in the ring, the guy's throwing the punch, and instead of flinching constantly, you parry, or you move, or you cover up, or you duck, or you bob and weave, and then you counter strike. That's why we do the Sinawali. I wanted you to know that from the start. Sinawali is not fighting. Sinawali makes you a better fighter and it gives you more skills for self-defense. Speed, balance, power, coordination, endurance, conditioning the body, all that from this next drill, this final drill. So you can start here on your shoulders. We do the most basic Sinawali first because I want you to see this crossing and uncrossing. Right hand, left hand. Right hand, left hand. Right hand, left hand. See what I did? Just bend the elbows. Right, left. Right, left. Right, left. And we're gonna make it smoother. We're gonna put it together here in a minute. Let me show you from the side. Right, left. Right, left. Also, you can think of the shape, the letter shape. It's a V. You're making a V, a V, a V, a V. V, come back, V, come back, V, come back, V, come back. But break it down, make it super simple so you learn it immediately and you immediately can start doing And you're gonna feel like Raya and the Last Dragon herself because you know how to do the basics in a Wally. All right. And then when you go to your Kali Martial Arts School, when you find the Kali Martial Arts School in Miami, on Miami Beach, you, wanna, you live in Miami, you're looking for Kali Martial Arts near me or you live in Los Angeles, looking for Kali Martial Arts near me, Look at, you live in Chicago, Kali Martial Arts near me. You live in Hartford, Connecticut, Kali Martial Arts near me. And you go to your first class and the instructor's like, well, now you're not gonna get this next one for a long time, so don't get frustrated. It's called Sinawali. And you'll just think quietly to yourself, watch me. I, I, I did the video. I did the video with that big guy. He kept talking the whole time, but somehow that made sense. And now I can do the basics and you're not gonna feel like such a newbie, although there's nothing wrong with being a beginner. We call it Mushin, or Mushin, depending on the style. Empty mind, or beginner's mind. I said the wrong word. What is the word? Mushin, that just means like a empty mind, right? Beginner mind. There's that V. There's the V on the other one. Now, I'm gonna go right hand, left hand, and then right hand, left hand, and then when I do it again, I'm gonna start with left hand, right hand, so that I'm changing which hand is on top as I strike, 
other hand on top, other hand on top, one hand on top, right, left, right, left, right hands on top now, left hands on top now, right hand. And now you're doing the basic pattern. This is two different strikes, it's four total. So we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Let's do another one because you picked that up so fast. Start here now and chamber it. Both sticks are on the same side. One hand is on top of the other one. That elbow is on top of that hand. This is my right elbow, left hand. I'm gonna go right, left, right, and under. Do that again. Right, left, right, and under. Again, right, left, I gotta keep them up. Right and under. Again, one, two, three. Now you've got three on each side, so we're gonna call it six. We're gonna call this pattern heaven. Heaven Sinawali pattern. When you're learning Kali martial arts or FMA, you're gonna learn the heaven Sinawali pattern. You start hitting the sticks together, you start doing your abanico. You're gonna do a lot of this. And you're going to do this with a partner, which is extremely fun. And this is going to build into other ones where the second one is going to become a deflecting block. And then another one where the second one becomes a strike to the knee. And then you're going to go to a four strike pattern where you go up and down. And you're going to call this high low or some version of it because schools call it different things depending on where you are. But it's all going to start with that. And then putting them together and then chambering same side and doing one V there's the V see the V's and then under V V under one, two, three, one, two, three. And like I said, if you have a bag, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. You're not trying to destroy the bag or destroy the sticks. You want a nice slicing motion to Three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. And once you get that, start to move around, taking small steps, moving to the right, moving to the left. Later, you'll be putting every time the right foot first, and then the left foot, and then the right foot. And then you'll start to go low. You'll go down on a knee. You'll lie down on your back. You'll come back, and you'll be doing this with a partner. And then you'll learn how to Start this way and then finish by stripping his stick and he'll strip your stick and then you'll be mono, you'll be hand to hand, be doing the hubad, lubad and elbows, all in Kali martial arts. You're gonna learn all that stuff because you start with the weapons and that's traditional by the way. Japanese, Korean styles, Chinese styles, started with a sword, started with a staff, started with a spear. And then once your weapon is taken from you, you learn to go hand to hand. When I was in the Marine Corps, you start with the rifle. You learn how to use the sidearm. Then, when you run out of ammunition and your bayonet gets broken, you no longer hook and jab, you knock the hand guards off, then you have to be able to go hand to hand and grapple and pull and all the horrible stuff of war. That's why we don't want war. But it's all the same. You always start weapons first and then you go to empty hand. That's why karate means empty hand empty hand referring to the fact that before that it was a sword or a spear or najinata or the the bow or the jo or the hanbo or the yawara we're going to do the kupatan we're going to do that small palm stick but start when you learn kali martial arts learn your angles all these basic angles like i said we're going to learn this one these are strikes that go into the eye or the throat or the solar plexus you're gonna learn that one. You're gonna learn how to finish them off right there. Learn how to do basic spins. You can add spins on the way down, spins on the way up. You can learn how to do different kinds of spins. You can start with this kind of spin to get flexibility in the wrist. And then you do my favorite. Go through the fingers to finish your workout because the whole time you're squeezing the sticks. And at the end, you've worked the flexors really well but you haven't worked the extensors. And if you work any muscle group, if you just do biceps, you're gonna walk around like a monkey like this. You've seen those young guys, right? Their hands don't fully extend anymore. And they have weak 
triceps and they get imbalance and pain. Or all they do are chest exercises. They don't strengthen the back. They walk around with rolled shoulders. They have neck pain all the time. You've got to do chest and back. You have to do squeezing, which we just did an hour of, but then you also have to do opening the hand. And this finger roll, you're not gonna find this in a Kali martial arts school near you, unless they watch my videos, but that's who I am. I blend a lot of styles together, kind of like Bruce Lee himself. Be like water, my friend. I'm not saying I'm Bruce Lee. I'm saying he had that idea. You, you do a bunch of different things and you take, in the Church of Wing Chun, I heard uh, Ramsey Dewey say it, last week. Some of you guys know Ramsey Dewey. He's that guy in China. There's a lot of videos. And something, I didn't even watch the video. It was just the title. Something about he, he was talking about Michael Jai White versus Bruce Lee. It's on the same day that I did. I didn't even know he did one on the same day. We must have been in the same uh, mental space thinking who would win, Michael Jai White or Bruce Lee? Go back and watch that video if you want to see what I think. Who cares what I think, right? What matters is what you think. So put your answer in there. The next one I'm gonna do later today, if I have time, is Michael Jai White versus, wait for it, this is the FMA guy's dream, Tony Ja. Michael Jai White versus Tony Ja, who would win? And I'm gonna use the reference of DMX, may he rest in peace, and uh, Jet Li and Romeo Must Die, and From the Cradle to the Grave. Remember those movies? Some of you guys saw those. If you haven't, those are great action martial arts movies. DMX versus Jet Li, Romeo Must Die. Michael Jai White versus Tony Jaw, who's gonna win? Tell you what, let's start it off in this video. At the, and it, that, that just tells me you watched to the very end. Go to the comments below, not the chat box, the comments below, tell me who you think's gonna win. Tony Jaw with his flying knees and flying elbows and Muay Thai in his uh, FMA and um, Thai martial arts or is it going to be Michael Jai White with his seven different black belts, Gojuru and Shotokan and Kyokushinkai and Taekwondo and Tangsudo and Judo and traditional Budo, which was Jiu Jitsu, and then uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Maybe that's more than seven. I don't know. I'll give you a little uh, hint, though. Tony Jaws, five foot eight, maybe five, six, probably for real, because they always say the actors are taller than they are. I think Michael Jai White is a legit 6'1". Tony Jaws probably 150 to 160. Michael Jai White's a good 220 to 250. Doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that the bigger guy wins, not at all. Just put your answer below. Who do you think's gonna win? Michael Jai White, Tony Jaw. All right, that's all I've got. You guys have been awesome. I'll see you in a little bit.